we will be using guidelines on the grinder table to help us orient the tool holder. If you're going to lay out the guidelines, it might be a good idea to do it with something that can be erased so you can experiment with the location of the guidelines. Notice that we have basically three guidelines here. These are the same angle. These two lines are for the clearance, and this is for the chamfer or the lead angle for the positive lead angle tool. I'll put this business card in here to demonstrate these angles. Let's call this edge horizontal and this vertical. And you can imagine a line 45 degrees from the horizontal and the vertical. The guideline for the left flank of the tool is 5 degrees clockwise of horizontal. So clockwise 5 degrees gives you this line here. The guideline for the end flank is 5 degrees counterclockwise of vertical. So it's 5 degrees, 5 degrees counterclockwise of the vertical line here. The guideline for the 45 degree edge is 45 degrees from both the horizontal and the vertical. So basically, it, this line here, which is 45 degrees between both of these, is going to be parallel with this line here and this one over here. We will grind the left flank first, lining up the tool holder and the tool block with the guideline that is 5 degrees clockwise of horizontal. That's this guideline right here. We carefully bring it into contact with the wheel and move it across the face of the wheel to equalize wear. We grind the end flank in a similar way using the guideline that is 5 degrees counterclockwise of vertical. So we'll line it up like this, parallel, bring it in contact, and keeping the same orientation, move back and forth across the wheel until it's cleaned up. Then we align the tool holder with one of the 45 degree marks. I'm using the back mark here. You can see the mark in the front. And slowly bring it in contact with the wheel. Check the dimension of the chamfer with optivizers if needed. Grinding the 45 degree positive lead angle tool is very similar. First, we hone the rake surface to remove any buildup. Next, we set the stick out, which we'll do at the lathe. Setting the stick out for the positive lead angle tool is very similar, just slightly different. First, we'll go ahead and put the tool block in place. And we want to get a distance of 3 quarters of an inch between the end of the workpiece and the left side of the tool holder. And again, I'm going to use the scale. I could have used a pair of dial calipers. Scale's very convenient. Once I've got that set, again, I will put the tool bit in here until it is locked against the back of the slot, and then slide it forward. But this time, we want the middle of that chamfered edge to be three quarters of an inch stuck out. So I'm just siding along this plane here until I, until it just, the end of it disappears. And then I'm bringing the center of that chamfered region in line with that plane and tightening in place. You can see that I have reverted to improperly using my left hand to hold the tool bit. Unless the work is sticking well out of the lathe chuck, this is not as safe as using your right hand to hold the tool bit. Now we're ready to take this to the bench grinder and sharpen it. Once the stick out has been established, we're ready to sharpen. In order to grind the 45 degree positive lead angle tool, we'll use the same guidelines. In this case, we'll start with the large chamfer end, the 45 degree 
edge, line it up with the guideline and, and continue as we did before. Same for these small clearance angles will be true. We'll line up here and here to get those. But we won't need to take much material off. Before I start, I'm going to mark the ends of these with a felt tip marker. I've dispensed with the alcohol and I may regret that, but it seems to be marking pretty well here. Okay, we're ready to go. We'll turn the wheel on, let it come up to speed and wait before we grind and we're ready to go. Before actually making a cut, in this case we're going to start with a positive lead angle tool. We're not going to do anything fancy such as hone these flanks. Simply removing the burr on the rake face will suffice for our simplified sharpening instructions. Next we have to insert the tool bit into the tool holder and get the stick out correct. The stick out for the tool in use is going to be .234 inches. I have a little gauge that is turned down to 0.234 inches and then a couple of flats are ground on it. I move the cross slide forward and then I trap this gauge in place Then I withdraw the cross slide and it comes out quickly. Now my stick out distance is set. Again, I'm going to simply insert the tool, use my right hand to hold it in the slot keeping it in contact with the back of the slot and then use my left hand to tighten the set screws and this tool will be ready to be used. Okay, we're ready to cut. I like to demonstrate on hot rolled steel. It's not a particularly pleasant material to work with so you know that if the cutter works well with this material it will work even better with something like free machining steel or most aluminum alloys. I normally use a multi-fix style tool holder such as this and I do prefer it especially for adjusting the height of the tool bit. On the other hand the Aloris system works very well and is much more widely used so I'm using it for this demonstration. As with any lathe tool it's essential that the tool be at the proper height. For the Wimberley tool holder, the top of the tool bit should be level with the axis of the lathe. I like to check this by taking a facing cut and watching to make sure that as the nib grows smaller and smaller, the top of the bit is level with the center of that nib. If the tool is above center, the relief is reduced and the tool will not bite into the work as it should. We're going to start our demonstration with the positive lead angle tool. We have a piece of three quarter inch hot rolled in here, turned down so we have a clean surface. The diameter is now 0.730 inches. We're going to use a speed of 410 RPM. This is slow enough so we don't get any welding of the chip on the top of the cutter. We could cut faster, but this is the speed I'm choosing. The depth of cut will be 50 thousandths. The feed rate will be 6.2 thousandths of an inch per revolution. We will not be forcing the cutter, but you can see that it removes a lot of material. Next, we will face the end of the piece off by hand. I will take a cut approximately 50 thousandths of an inch deep. Finally, we will chamfer the corner of the piece.
We will next demonstrate the negative lead tool holder. If you're using the same tool holder for both bits, that is the negative lead angle and the positive lead angle tool bits, you'll have to adjust the height of the tool holder when you switch bits because the geometries are significantly different. We're going to be taking a cut of 30 thousandths, then creating a shoulder, and then we will face the end of the piece off and finally create a round over. But before we do that, we have to set the stick out of the tool. This should be familiar from the last time we did this. Make sure this is tight. Come in here and clamp this gauge between the end of the work and the left side of the tool holder. Insert the tool bit. Hold it with your right hand. Slide it against the back of the groove. Keeping it there, slide it forward till it hits the piece. Tighten the front. Tighten the back screw. And go back and tighten the front again and make sure it's good and tight. Now we're ready to go. Of course, as I said before, we have to check the height of the tool bit. We're going to take a cut of 30 thousandths of an inch, then create a shoulder, then face the end, and finally create a round over. Here I am creating the roundover. We have just introduced two basic bit geometries for the Wimberley tool holder. The negative five degree lead angle tool bit and the positive 45 degree angle tool bit. We discussed the details of the geometry, we sharpened a couple of bits, and we demonstrated how they work on a piece of hot rolled steel.